As regulatory bodies implement sweeping new rules for the financial industry, an increasing problem lies in navigating these always complex and occasionally differing rules and regs across international boundaries. JLN sat down with Andrew Gebhardt, managing partner at Finex, to see how the situation is playing out for mutual funds in Europe. We have a usage fund based uh, in Europe. We have an investment manager uh, based in London that does manage accounts and runs funds. And also we have an NFA regulated CTA here in the States. The one thing that we did do, which is very particular or peculiar um, in our case, is that we didn't get our European entity regulated under the NFA, which is the traditional path. We set up a completely new firm in the US. And we did that, let's call it a regulatory hedge. Um, we want our US business to be regulated by US regulated. We want our European business regulated by European regulators. We don't want cross-pollination of, of, of regulation. And the easiest way to do it is to start afresh. It's very easy for EU-regulated uh, firms and US-regulated firms to simply go and, and, and get regulated in a different jurisdiction. And I've heard many people say, you know, Britain and, and, and the United States are two countries divided by the same language. Our regulations have, are both written in English, but they couldn't be more different. The biggest difference between the, the, the US and Europe, I think, can be boiled down to one, really, if we want to try and keep this succinct, and that's proportionality. Um, the FCA, which is our, 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 our primary regulator, doesn't have the sense of proportionality. We are treated very much like a large firm, a much larger firm than, than, than we are. It's like an onion of regulation. You decide how much time you want to have and how, how, how close we can get to the, the, to the specifics of how you run a users fund. But basically, the, 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 the outer layer is risk, part B. Um, and there you have absolute commitment. I buy 100 shares at $1. I've committed $100. Okay, commitment. Absolute VAR, which is ours. I bought 100, um, 100 shares at $1. The potential, uh, my potential to lose is three because uh, that's what my assessment of the maximum risk for a period of holding is, right? Then there's relative VAR, which is basically my potential to lose against an index. So I'm basically uh, using an accepted index, be it the FTSE, for example, something like that, and I risk against that, that, that index, and, and there are parameters around that index. It's, it's quite, relative index is probably the hardest one to understand to get your head around because the futures guy is just, uh, it's, it's, it can go out of control very, very quickly. Um, so we are licensed as an absolute bar firm. Um, and consequently, all that side of thing is absolutely fine. There are no problems. You can trade to your heart's content. It's all very, very contained. You've got a maximum risk of about 4% per day. That's what you're allowed on to use this rule, which to be honest, for most people is quite good, especially people that trade a bit more intraday. No problems whatsoever. Then, okay, who's your counterparty risk? Well, it's exchange listed. No counterparty risk. Check. That's the next layer. Last one. Concentration risk is where we, we land and we look at, you know, who am I exposed to? So when I trade an index, I'm exposed to nobody or it's diversified. But when I trade a government bond futures, I'm exposed to the trade. And that's the problem. Concentration risk is the problem. AIM is helping. Um, but again, most service providers do not understand until you tell them. Your onion now is taking 5 or 6% performance away from your strategy. And you're not paying those costs to someone that can bring you money, like a, an IB agreement with, a, uh, you know, with, a, with, a, with an introducing broker or with an FCM that can then maybe... No, you're giving these to regulators and lawyers. And regulators and lawyers don't raise your AUM. Thank you.